Hello everybody. Just when the world in India started perceiving that the COVID problem and its negative repercussions are finally on their way out and we could hope for a return to economic normalcy, the Ukraine crisis has hit us to belie such hopes. It is time for the fourth episode in our program Call of Duty on Strategic and Defence Matters. In this episode, we will be covering the Ukraine crisis, more specifically with regard to how it impacts India. I hope you find it informative and interesting. The fact that Russia, in response to what it perceives as NATO overreach into its backyard, has accorded political recognition to two breakaway republics in eastern Ukraine, Donetsk and Luhansk, has decided to send troops into Ukraine to secure its interests in the Russian-speaking eastern Donbas region, has set off alarm bells ringing in the United States and among European nations. Consequently, the President of the United States, the Prime Minister of UK, as well as some European leaders have announced severe economic sanctions against Russia. Oil prices have jumped to nearly $100 a barrel and stock markets are falling, indicating that an economic crisis is once again in the making. Ukraine is a country in Eastern Europe. In terms of area, it is the second largest country in Europe. It borders Russia towards its east and northeast. The significance of Ukraine primarily stems from the fact that it was a crucially important part of the erstwhile Soviet Union, which broke up into independent states in 1991. Not only does Ukraine have vast mineral resources, including uranium, titanium, coal and gas. It is highly industrialized and has immense manufacturing potential even for defense equipment. Further, it has vast agricultural resources and thus is an important source of food and food products. Furthermore, its Crimean Peninsula hosted the Russian Navy's Black Sea Fleet. In the aftermath of the breakup following the Soviet Union's defeat in the Cold War, when Russia was seen to be at its weakest economically and otherwise, the Western nations undertook a series of measures to curtail and monitor Russia's big power ambitions into the future. The most significant of these was the retention of NATO and its expansion by inducting the erstwhile Warsaw Pact nations of Eastern Europe into the NATO fold. An effort was also made to reduce Russian control over the erstwhile republics of the Soviet Union, especially Ukraine, by similar measures. The Orange Revolution of 2004-2005, epitomized by civil disobedience and street protests, resulted in a re-vote being ordered in the country's presidential elections and Viktor Yushchenko being elected president. In a similar vein, in February 2014, his successor, President Viktor Yanukovych, whose closest ties and support base had always been with the majority Russian-speaking Eastern and Southern Ukraine, was ousted as a result of street protests and the violent Euromaidan clashes in Kyiv's Independence Square that erupted after he rejected an association agreement with the EU in November 2013. It is soon thereafter, in March 2014, that Russia invaded Ukraine, 
and annexed the Crimean Peninsula from Ukraine. Russia was consequently suspended from the G8 and international sanctions were imposed on Russia. Russia is also supporting a violent separatist rebellion in Ukraine's industrial heartland of Donbas in its east, where more than 14,000 people have been killed in the last seven years. In 2019, amendments were made to Ukraine's constitution to enshrine the irreversibility of the country's strategic course towards EU and NATO membership. In response, in March and April 2021, in an attempt at strategic coercion, Russia mobilized a large quantum of military personnel and equipment on its borders with Ukraine, but pulled back some of these forces in June. The buildup was renewed in October 2021, and a large number of tanks, missiles and artillery guns, as well as more than 100,000 troops, were amassed on three sides of the border with Ukraine in the four months since then. In December 2021, Russia presented two draft treaties seeking security guarantees that Ukraine would not join NATO and that the quantum of NATO troops and military hardware stationed in Eastern Europe would be reduced. These drafts were rejected by NATO and the US government. In the same month, Russia carried out an intimidatory test firing of a series of Zircon hypersonic missiles, which is intended to enter service with the Russian Navy in 2022. On February 21st, 2022, Russia recognized the breakaway republics of Donetsk and Luhansk as sovereign states and ordered Russian troops to enter Ukraine, triggering a fresh round in the crisis. Predictably, the US government, EU and UK have announced fresh economic sanctions against Russia and the breakaway states. Further, two days later, the Russian president announced that he had authorized a special military operation into Ukraine, which was followed by precision missile strikes against Ukrainian air bases and air defense systems. In response, the Ukrainian government has declared a state of emergency and also claimed to have shot down a number of Russian combat aircraft and an attack helicopter. So what has triggered the latest crisis? For Russia, it is crucially important that Ukraine, like other erstwhile republics of the Soviet Union, remains within its zone of influence and does not become a part of NATO, which it perceives clearly as an anti-Russian military alliance. In the early years after the breakup, Russia was too weak to act when NATO membership was extended to all the erstwhile Warsaw Pact allies of Russia. However, Russia clearly perceives that it is not powerless anymore. It also considers China's support as a major source of strength. It has decided to treat Ukraine as the red line against further NATO expansion. Thus, it has triggered this crisis by holding out a threat to Ukraine and attempting to give a strong message to Ukraine and its NATO backers that it is willing to even go to war to ensure that NATO does not expand further into its immediate backyard. On the other hand, the US, UK and some European nations continue to perceive Russia as a long-term threat just as they viewed the Soviet Union in similar light during the Cold War. More so, after the close trade and security links that Russia has forged with China. These nations believe that Russia needs to be reined in militarily and economically. They believe that Russia's aggressive stance, close strength from its economic resurgence, 
based on its rising trade with EU countries like the agreement with Germany for supplying gas through the Nord Stream gas pipelines at much cheaper rates as compared to the United States and Ukraine. Russia has major trade deals with other European countries like Italy, France, Netherlands, Belgium and Poland also. To that extent, the US, UK and NATO are likely to make efforts to ensure that Russia does not have a smooth run militarily against Ukraine. Nonetheless, NATO countries are not likely to intervene militarily in Ukraine except through equipment and technological support. It is more likely that they will use stringent economic sanctions to put a check on Russia's actions in Ukraine. It is yet not clear whether the game of brinkmanship being played by Russia will actually result in a full-fledged war whereby Russia will use its military dominance to take control of Ukraine beyond the Donbas region. Nonetheless, an important question is whether and how this crisis will have an impact on India. Though clearly, India has little say or weight in the larger issue, however, there may be some points of impact. Let me take them up one by one. Firstly, in the short term, India would need to repatriate its 20,000 or so people who are studying or working in Ukraine. With considerable experience behind us, this is not likely to create insurmountable problems. Secondly, India and Ukraine have extensive trade links amounting to over 2.2 billion US dollars annually. There is likelihood that this trade may be disrupted, though temporarily. Thirdly, there are likely to be economic problems, both due to resultant turmoil in the global markets, as well as rise in energy costs, especially petroleum and gas. It is still too early to accurately predict the extent of economic stress that the country is likely to face in the coming months and years on account of the Ukraine crisis and the resultant sanctions that are being imposed on Russia. Fourthly, Russia is the biggest supplier of military hardware to India, the latest being the S-400 air defense systems. India has also some ongoing defense deals with Ukraine. A war between these countries and resultant sanctions against Russia could have an impact on ongoing deals, especially in terms of delays and possible escalation in costs. Fifthly, and most importantly, it is in the political and strategic realm that we are likely to face the maximum challenges, especially if there is a pressure on India to take sides in this conflict. India's strategic relationship with the US and Western nations have been steadily improving in the last few years. But that can come under stress if India does not show a willingness to condemn or criticize Russia with which it has good relations traditionally and ongoing defense deals. In this context, India is well aware that it is dependent on crucial support from the US and Western nations for dealing with a belligerent China. Further, a full-fledged war in Eastern Europe, if it occurs, is likely to divert attention and resources of these countries away from the Indo-Pacific, which may be taken advantage of by our northern neighbor. Perceived ambivalence on our part is not likely to be viewed favorably by these countries, especially considering that Russia has not supported India in dealing with our northern neighbors' aggressiveness in recent years. Nonetheless, it may be prudent for India to continue on the path of strategic neutrality in keeping with our long-term security interests. 
with that i come to the end of this episode in the next episodes we will be discussing various aspects related to the india china border dispute and the resultant standoff i hope you found this episode useful and interesting jai hind and good day